what is up everybody welcome back to another video I am pretty excited about this because it's something that I have been studying kind of on the down low but also not really secretive because I guess people have already picked up on it in some of my illustrations but in today's video I will be going over how to draw in the Demon Slayer style or more accurately how to incorporate the Demon Slayer style into your own artwork so let's get started so for those of you that don't know which would be crazy but if you don't know i'm going to tell you demon slayer is one of the most popular anime and manga out at this moment the correct name is kimetsu no yaiba it's about a boy named chanjiro and his sister nezuko who has been turned into a demon he is trying to find the cure for her while obviously trying to become the strongest demon slayer in the demon slaying corpse with that being said it being in this kind of industrialized era or at least getting into the industrialized era the story itself and the world building is very unique because you have in some instances very a lot of older culture from the older japan era you know incorporated within the show like you know the music the the outfits of course you know what they're wearing obviously they're using katanas so they're still using swords but also there's some more industrialized stuff like with characters now being incorporated using guns using gunpowder you know there's trains you know there's people wearing like almost suits like you know that were inspired i'm like obviously maybe 19 20s culture 1900s culture from the west so it's it, it's a lot it's a really unique hybrid of culture in this in this show and in this manga because it's not quite current but it's not quite super old it's like right there right before you know all of that stuff kind of hit in the world very realistic to the times as well in history now you guys i know you're not here for a history lesson on what was going on in japan during the 1900s you're here to learn about art you're here to learn about you know how can i get this style incorporated into my own or if you really want to try to replicate this style for fan art purposes or for other you know means or whatever you're doing you want to learn how to do it so we're going to break it down and we're going to talk about each part of the art style and kind of what you can look for what you can do how you can do it and uh we'll go from there so first we're going to talk about body structure because this one's probably the most simple not in terms of doing it but in terms of how it's done now the artist koyo actually does a lot of anatomy for because the, ma the majority of the cast and the characters are young you know they they a their age range you know is from maybe let's say 12 years old to maybe 20. so we're looking at a lot of young characters here right we're not looking at a lot of older characters that are you know maybe in their 30s or 40s you have the occasional character that might be older so their anatomy might be a little different but the majority of the story is focused around young people young women and young men fighting these demons because obviously you know you're in your prime and you know you want to be able to fight you don't want to be super old and not be able to fight so they're 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 really young <laughs> um and the anatomy is based on that and not saying that a lot of young people aren't you know really tall but a lot of most asian people are not very tall the average height roughly is about five seven five eight for a guy so you know being the age 13 or 14 they're going to be a lot shorter than maybe a 12 to you know 15 or 16 year old here in the west that you know can sometimes be 5 8 at 14 years old so it's you know it, it's very realistic in terms when it comes to asian people in height because a lot of the characters are short i'm not gonna lie they're they're really short they're really muscular and they're really you know kind of stocky characters you have the occasional character like Tengen, that's the character I was trying to think of. I wanted to say Ten Goku, but it, I was getting him and, and Ren Goku confused. So it's it's Tengen. He is a very tall character. I'm pretty sure he's like six feet tall. Um, and even Ren Goku's actually, I'm pretty sure like five seven or five eight. But these guys are a little bit older, obviously, than the main characters. So of course they're going to be a little bit taller. They're going to be a little bit more muscular. But also, you know, they could be maybe not even from Japan. Not those characters in particular, but just in general, you know even your character your character might not be japanese that does not mean you cannot replicate this style or cannot add to your current style with this because you know your character might be tall that's not what i'm saying if your character's tall they're tall if they're short they're short this step with anatomy just might be a little harder to kind of transfer because you know tanjiro is like maybe five four five five and if your character is six foot three the anatomy is going to be a little bit different and you just have to figure out a way to balance that out the eyes honestly are one of my favorite parts of the demon slayer art style because the eyes are, can be so different depending on the character but they're also very similar in terms of how koyo does them 
um, and I have some pictures on the screen here that you can see how the eyes look with all these multiple different type, type of characters whether they're demons or whether they're humans they all have a general sense of style but they all can look completely different because obviously some demons eyes depending on what rank they are can look different than you know a, a, a grunt demon but also you know hero and protagonist eyes can look different depending on the character because maybe their color palette it matches their eyes or maybe their personality you know is a little bit more angry so their eyes are going to be a little bit more maybe a little bit more sharp a little bit more narrow a little bit more angry looking rather than the like the main character tanjiro which is very you know he's very open-minded he's very heroic he's very very brave very happy soul so his eyes are a lot more open and a lot more inviting and a lot more just subtle and and, and nice now face shape face shape in demon slayer i tend to actually i actually like i like most of the and when i say face shape i use more facial structure a lot of the characters have a very similar facial structure very pointy chins very kind of angular faces or round faces i should say not a lot of characters in demon slayer kind of mix it up there's not a lot of square chins or more of a thicker face in demon slayer most of them at least from what i've seen so far have a very you know narrow face a very pointy chin you know just very chiseled very chiseled features when it comes to the facial structure and the facial shape overall so if you are struggling with facial shape or even facial structure or you want to kind of replicate this style you know the kind of more the big forehead kind of style or i don't even know what it's technically called but that in that kind of style where the the foreheads are really big and the chins are very like skinny and, and chiseled kind of like fairy tale in a way too fairy tale kind of has that similar kind of style for the face then yeah definitely definitely study study facial structure for this i actually personally enjoy it i i enjoy I have been enjoying using it more with newer characters and even redesigning some of my other characters to kind of use it instead of all my characters having a very round face. I definitely uh, I definitely encourage it. It can shake things up for your art and I think it can, you know, add, add to your arsenal, as they say. Now, aside from anatomy, we're going to move on to inking because obviously I don't want to keep you guys here forever. But inking and coloring really, really make Demon Slayer the way it looks because if you take away the inking and the coloring demon slayer could end up honestly looking pretty generic but the way the inking style is done it's it's mixed in with that classical inking style of the japanese where they use a lot of uh, variety in their line weight almost like using a brush pen or back when you, um in back in the day i should say when it's kind of when they were using uh, kanji and using the brush and the ink how it, it looks rough it does not look digital and crisp it looks rough especially when tanjiro is using you know his water breathing attacks or he's using Hirokami Ka Hir Hinokami Kagura. That's what I'm trying to say. Gosh, these words today, I swear. But all of those effects that are done in the manga, but also in the anime, have that kind of rough look to them. Almost like they were just drawn on paper and slapped right on the screen. So the inking style is very unique. I wouldn't say it's very new. It's not like anything that's like breaking ground, breaking new. Because a lot of other artists obviously use this technique. But if you want to replicate this style the best, Thing I can say to do if you're working digitally of course in clip studio is, is mix up your brush your brush styles so if you're using a G pen for very crisp lines maybe try to find you know another another pen like maybe use the real G pen maybe use a texture pen try to use pens that can mix up your line variety and line weight so it can kind of give that rough look almost as if it was done on paper rather than the computer and you can use that in certain areas of your art to kind of put emphasis on areas like shadows or like if areas are overlapping or if there's foreground images you know that kind of stuff inking for demon slayer literally is is so fun I, i've been studying it for a minute now and, and i've quite enjoyed just learning this new inking style and adding it to what i already do originally and last but not least coloring so there's two things that we could talk about for coloring for demon slayer because obviously there is an anime version and there's a manga version now the manga version that koyo uses um is definitely it's 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 uh, so obviously they use copics so it's gonna look more it's gonna look more rough it's gonna look more textured it's gonna look more organic but even the coloring with the copics I, I it's not like a lot it's not that the artist isn't doing like a crazy amount it's not like you know they're doing stuff like one piece where it's like so much definition so many shadows so much detail it's very very basic copic work to be honest guys like you know they have a foundation color and then maybe one shadow color 
and then for the clothes it's maybe one color and then a color for the shadows and the hair is normally like one color all the way through it's solid and then you know whatever color is accenting that like you obviously like nezuko's ends for her hair are that kind of orangish reddish color but that's pretty much it guys there's not a lot of detail for copic art for the demon slayer series so if you are attracted to that if you like the more simplified minimalistic look then make sure your art is very detailed with the line work that way when you color it with copics your line work kind of stands out more rather than you know you doing a, a lot of minimal line work but then you try to do a lot of crazy stuff with copics if you already have a copic style go for it i'm not saying change your copic style to match demon slayers that you know if you have your own style and you love it then you know that's just one aspect of demon slayer that you know for some people they might want to get into now if you want to get really technical the anime version coloring for demon slayer is amazing it's very rendered it's very crisp it's very professional and new they use a lot of gradients guys so what that means for those of you that might not know that term gradients is just from one color going to another and it's, and it's on a spectrum so if you have a red like a very solid red the end of the spectrum for that red would be a very honestly it would probably be black at the end of the day everything goes back to black but it would be like maybe a dark red and then it would come gradually up to that red and then if you keep going it would gradually turn into a pink that's what a gradient is and the demon slayer anime incorporates gradients a lot and they'll do a basic cell shade for the character so obviously they'll have a base color a shadow and they'll use gradients in terms of light source to really push that artwork and as you can see on the screen i'm currently coloring diaz in this kind of aesthetic in this kind of way and you can see kind of how much more it just it just adds a little bit more definition to the picture really solidifies that this is not a flat image there is shadows there is light source coming from somewhere and it gives it that more rendered anime look as if it was on a movie so if you guys were really trying to add to your own arsenal of color um i definitely say incorporate gradients into your work because even if it's very subtle it can really push an image really really well and that guys is pretty much it you know this has been a kind of crash course on the demon slayer art style um i didn't go super heavy into the super technical stuff because you know this is just a video kind of like an overall summary for you guys if you guys want to get into this style definitely comment below i'd love to make videos kind of going over and dissecting the art style of demon slayer you know the manga art style and even maybe some anime stuff as well if you guys really want to learn how to do some of these things in clip studio i am super open to show you guys because i'm planning on doing it anyway for some of my haiku studies to kind of make some videos about that i already made a video about that already but i'm definitely coming out with more so if you guys are interested in learning more about demon slayer i'm all for it because i really love demon slayer it's one of my favorite animes out right now and i plan to do more with haiku and uh, eventually attack on titan as well um, I draw a lot of my facial inspiration from Attack on Titan in terms of effects when things are very scary or when things are very serious. Attack on Titan's line work for effects are amazing. If you know, then you know. But like I said, that's it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like. Please subscribe. Please share it. Share it to all your art friends that love Demon Slayer. Let's get the ball rolling on this video. For real. Because I really enjoyed making this. I thought it was fun. And I hope you guys did too. And I will catch you guys for the next video. Peace.